a very good morning to you all so those who were there in the last class yesterday so you have seen that we have started with the first chapter in zoology and that is animal kingdom and in the animal kingdom we had begun with the basis of classification now this is the first part of the chapter and at the same time a very very important part because you will see that maximum questions you will be able to solve from just this much portion okay so in the basis of classification we have discussed about the various criteria that we use to classify the animals and in this we have taken levels of organization where we have mentioned the four levels that is cellular tissue organ and organ system then the next thing we talked about is the body plan and in this body plan we have mentioned three of them that is cell aggregate blind sac and the third one was tube within tube body plan then next thing we have taken symmetry that is whether the animal's body is such on the basis of external morphology when we can cut it into equal or similar halves then it is symmetrical which can be either radial or bilateral then the next thing that we had started with was germ layers so germ layers was in continuation so in germ layers i had discussed in tiny detail regarding the embryonic development so i told you that every organism starts its life as a single cell that is zygote now this zygote undergoes cleavage divisions to give rise to a multicellular solid ball which is called the morula then soon this morula transforms into a hollow ball like structure which is called blastula and in case of mammals this blastula is called blastocyst now this blastula then undergoes lot of movement within the cells the cells migrate from one location to the other giving rise to next stage of development which is called gastrula and it is this gastrula when the cells are moving they are migrating from one location to the other they are arranging themselves in the form of germ layers they are called so because the germ layers will give rise to all the tissues and in the organisms where higher level of development is there then it would be organ organ system so on right so uh, in case of germ layers we had mentioned that the entire animal groups we can classify into two depending on what germ layers are there and not to be forgotten those who were not there in the last class let me reiterate that the first phylum of animal kingdom porifera now poriferans don't have any germ layer because there it is just cell aggregate plan body is a collection of cells which and the cells have their uh, some level of independence still with them so there the tissue structure has not developed at all since there is no uh, such a structure developed there even in their embryonic development if we will see you will find that they don't reach gastrula stage their uh, development will be up to blastula and from there the entire organism will be formed so germ layers are absent in poriferans so from after that that is from coelenterata to chordate rest of the animal groups there are the germ layers present and in this germ layers first we had mentioned that it is diploblastic animals diploblastic animals and diploblastic animals have two germ layers i had drawn a diagram also for you and here i'll just put the examples once again that those were coelenterata and tenophora so just these two phyla they are diploblastic then coming to the other one that is triploblastic triploblastic now triploblastic animals these have three germ layers so here there are three germ layers and these three germ layers would be ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm
so in this case there is a cellular layer in between ectoderm and endoderm while in case of diploblastic animals we had seen there was a non cellular gelatinous layer which was called mesoglea uh yes mesoglea is you cannot say that mesoglea and mesoderm are same because mesoglea is a undifferentiated just gelatinous mass is there there are no cells in it and that is why you cannot count it as a germ layer while here in case of mesoderm there are now cells present there are cells present so this is a proper germ layer okay so this is triploblastic and for triploblastic the example would be after tenophora that is starting with platyhelminthes platyhelminthes and from here going up to chordata going up to chordata now in the last class if you remember i had given you something which we can relate here once again that when the organism was developing in the gastrula stage so this blastula from the blastula there was a indentation in vagination to the inside giving rise to the development of the primitive gut which is also called the archenteron or gastrocele so you see here outer one which was developing was ectoderm here this is endoderm and this endoderm lined cavity is called the gastrocele or the archenteron and here this cavity which was the blastula cavity this is blastocele and just a sec the opening from which this invagination started this is called blastopore now suppose that in this group of organism a complete digestive tract is present so you will see that as this organism keeps growing let us suppose this is how the larva or maybe the young one is developing so this archenteron also keeps on growing and ultimately somewhere later it will form another opening now you can see there are two openings formed and this is how the tube within tube body plant would develop now this blastopore which was here now this blastopore would be one of the opening of the digestive tract and in the tube within tube body plan we have seen that the digestive tract has two separate openings one was mouth and the other was anus now this blastopore has two probabilities either this blastopore develops into the mouth or this could be developing into anus right so if this is developing into mouth so that means the other opening would be the anus which has formed later in the embryonic development and vice versa if this blastopore is developing into the anus so that means mouth develops later so on this basis of development now we can have two terms that is one is protostomic protostomic development so you see proto word comes for first protos is first and stom word comes for mouth so that means mouth first so in this case what has happened the blastopore becomes the mouth blastopore forms mouth so as a result you can very well understand that the anus develops later in the embryonic development so example of these protostomic animals are or protostomia you can say those are annelida arthropoda and mollusca annelida arthropoda and mollusca these three phyla are protostomic then the other term would be deuterostomic deuterostomic which is deuteros means second so here 
deuteros word means second and stome we have already written means mouth so in this case the blastopore is destined to become the anus so that means anus is formed earlier and mouth would be formed later in the embryonic development okay so in simple words you can say that of course as since we have mentioned the concept of blastopore we can write blastopore forms anus and here the examples would be after mollusca that is echinodermata echinodermata hemichordata and last but not the least chordata okay so here we can add on this concept some uh, people take it with tube within tube body plan because when they talk about tube within tube body plan there itself it can be added on that the tube within tube body plan is having two separate openings the mouth and the anus and depending on which opening develops earlier accordingly the animals can be classified either as protostomic animals or deuterostomic animals right and accordingly uh, part of the classification also puts them as protostomia and deuterostomia so this was uh, another classification basis and since we have just talked about mesoderm so try to imagine the uh, triploblastic animal so in this triploblastic animal uh, ectoderm and endoderm i have shown and here in between there will be development of the mesoderm now this mesoderm when it is formed this can form once the cells have been formed those cells can be arranged in such a way so that internally they are forming a complete lining so that the gut as well as the body wall both of them are internal means the gut outside and body wall internally they are getting lined by mesoderm so this would be the mesoderm here and this mesoderm lined cavity that you see between the body wall and the gut this would be what is the coelom this would be the coelom so because that would be our next basis of classification which i am going to take up with you that is coelom so coelom by definition is a body cavity because coelom word means body cavity but we have to specify it true coelom when we talk about true coelom is that body cavity which is lined by mesoderm so you can very well understand that until and unless the animals did not become triploblastic we cannot talk about true coelom so coelom condition would be only in triploblastic animals so accordingly diploblastic animals and which don't have any germ layer you can put them all as a coelomata because this is the term your uh, new ncrt has uh, added up in the new edition so porifera coelentrata as well as uh, tinophora they have put them as a coelomata that means they are not having any uh, coelom ah uh, yes uh, by the time you take it down i can take a few doubts here right yes shubham has talked about nematodes very correct now nematoda ha does have a complete digestive tract very correct so uh, something would be formed earlier no doubt so they are also in them also mouth develops earlier so they are protostomic but actually uh, once if you go in the higher books you will see protostomia and deuterostomia these terms they take up only when uh, coelom has appeared so from there onwards while in case of nematodes or ascalminthes you know they are pseudo coelomates that's why okay uh this is which what about the inner cell mass at blastocyst that is of course that will be uh, in case of uh, mammals the development would be slightly uh, different everything would be happening at the level of blast uh, the inner cell mass there the folding would be occurring there archentron will be formed so we are not going into that that would be done with the human reproduction chapter here i have taken a very simpler easier uh, diagram to represent the concept okay and uh, yes nematodes as i told you the nematodes are protostomic and in that sense but they are not counted in protostomia 
protostomia would be a basis of classic uh, means it's a category in the classification which we take up only in case of coelomate animals so coelomate animals u coelomate animals you will study they are annelida to podeta and these u coelomates are then categorized into two protostomia and deuterostomia okay so uh, they are not counted in protostomia otherwise the development is very much protostomic in case of uh, nematodes also okay so uh, i think by this time you must have taken this so we can move on to coelom the next concept of the basis of classification so here our next concept is coelom or as the ncrt puts it body cavity but not just any body cavity is called coelom first thing body cavity lined by mesoderm lined by mesoderm so on that basis we have coelom now coelom is one concept which i have found many of the students are always uh having lot of confusion with it so just try to pay attention what is being done and then of course you can raise your doubts now you see coelom uh one small thing i can relate here that wh what do you think why the coelom must have originated because with coelom now what has happened there is lot of space here the coelomic space and coelomic space uh, allowed the development of number of organ systems because this is providing the space over there so as the animals became more and more advanced more complex organ systems evolved so this coelomic space really helped and even in some of the annelids marine annelids you will find that uh, this coelomic space is also giving the space for the uh, collection of gametes which can be then released out okay so that is the reason or we can relate what is the uh, evolutionary significance of coelom okay now coming to uh, body cavity which is lined by mesoderm that is coelom so on this basis you will see that one condition is a coelom now a coelom this we find in case of platyhelminthes that is the flat worms and if you take a section through a platyhelminthes and here once again i am going to differ a little because when you take a ts through any platyhelminth which is a flat worm you won't get a round outlining as uh, it is given in your textbook so rather when you cut through it you will get something like this because the ventral side is totally flat dorsal side is slightly elevated like this and here in between the body wall inside here this is the gut they are incomplete digestive tract and this is lined by endoderm and the space here in between you see this is filled with mesoderm so here we have i'm just drawing a quick diagram so that you can get a uh, idea about it okay so like this now we can label it this is ectoderm this is endoderm which is lining the gut this is the gut here and this is mesoderm and since mesoderm here comprises loosely arranged cells here it is also called mesodermal parenchyma mesodermal parenchyma right because just they are arranged like loosely uh, arranged cells as you see in the plants right so this kind of condition is there so here you can very well understand that in the gut after the digestion the end products of digestion will be diffusing through this mesodermal parenchyma and reaching to the other parts as well and since platyhelminthes are flat worms undoubtedly but they can also be called pseudo uh, sorry they can also be called solid worms reason being the body cavity is no longer there is no space here left out rather mesoderm is filled in it so mesoderm is filled in it that's why they are called solid worms 
so that is about the ac loam and that's why you see in platy helminthes yesterday we have done the level of organization that was organ level organ systems complex organ systems have not developed here as yet okay so this is one condition then next one i can rub at least this much i want to keep the other thing so next one pseudo silom now pseudo word comes for false right now here the example where you get it that is ashkelminthes and in ashkelminthes only one class you have studied which is in your syllabus that is nematoda or nematelminthes now these are certainly round worms so if we cut a section through them we will certainly get a circular outline theek okay? hai circular outline we will get and in the center once again here this is the gut lined by endoderm and here mesoderm is in the form of pouches like this okay so this is the gut here this is ectoderm this is endoderm this is mesodermal pouch and this is not a empty space mind it as it is shown in the uh, diagram don't confuse it that here there is empty space here there is a mesodermal organ present which is surrounded by mesodermal lining and this is space here so this is the space which is this is space is called the pseudo silom pseudo silom this is pseudo silom so why pseudo silom because the cavity is still there but this cavity is not lined by mesoderm on all the sides so that's why this condition is pseudo silomic condition okay now coming to the true silom last one that is now for true silom suppose you are cutting through the animal having true silom let us say we are taking a ts like this and in this ts what we will be seeing that this is the outer body wall inside this is the gut and this entire space is lined by mesoderm like this and on one side i will make the cells also uh, that is understandable then that on the other side also same type of thing would be there okay like this so once again this is ectoderm now this is mesoderm and this mesoderm here this can be called this mesoderm can be called silomic epithelium so you can use the word silomic epithelium or you can also use a word here that is peritoneum so these are all different terms you have heard here and there but now you know what it is okay so mesoderm silomic epithelium or peritoneum that is one and the same thing other example for both acelom and pseudocelom no other example acelom condition is only in one phylum that is platyhelminthes and pseudocelom also is in one phylum that is ashkelminthes so those are the only examples okay 
this is the endoderm and this is space here of course is coelom and this is since it is true coelom we can write the word u coelom this is u coelom okay so this was our third condition that is u coelom so you see in the entire animal kingdom when we talk about coelom so coelom is the body cavity lined by mesoderm now that mesoderm can be entirely filled in the body cavity then it is called a coelom because the cavity is not left out that is space is filled up that is in platyhelminthes the mesoderm can be present in the form of pouches and it is not forming an entire lining in the body cavity then it is pseudo coelom condition and if it is forming an entire lining as you can see over here so that is u coelomate condition okay so uh, all three are here in front of you you can compare that these are how they uh, the arrangement would be now u coelom the example would be from annelida to chordata annelida arthropoda mollusca echinodermata hemichordata and chordata all of them they are having true coelom u coelomate condition so you just take this much and then i'll take a small although that is not very important for the neat i feel but uh, i'll just mention the term at least with you that this u coelom can be of two types depending on how it arises in the embryonic life so in a adult animal you won't be able to find out you can you can see when you cut a section through the adult animal you will find out that it is having a true coelom that you can understand but how it actually uh, came to that part of a structure that can be studied only when we go through the embryonic life okay so that is on the basis of embryology so in this case uh, i'll take this part here and i can rub this diagram as well okay so here you see u coelom this as we mentioned it can be of two types on the basis of development one is schizocelom most people pronounce schizocelom whichever way hardly matters so schizocelom and the other is enterocelom schizocelom and the enterocelom now schizocelom is this one develops by splitting in mesoderm so in this group of animals where schizocelom is present you will find that when the mesoderm arises it is in the form of bunch of cells so you can just imagine group of cells are there which are forming the mesoderm and then there would be a splitting so that in the center there is a cavity and the cells are now arranged on the periphery so that's how schizocelom arises and this type of we will find in case of three phylum annelids annelida arthropoda and mollusca annelida arthropoda and mollusca these three and if you remember that's why i told you in the beginning these three also we have mentioned that they are protostomes that's why i am doing it in this manner because in animalia the questions that you get are with mixed concepts so you can easily say that all protostomes are schizocelomates that way we can relate now coming to enterocelom the enterocelom this one develops enteron word again there is an enteron term you see enteron is for gut so when they are developing the early primitive gut archenteron which develops so from that archenteron small pouches appear and they then detach forming the mesoderm so this one develops 
from enterocelic pouches enterocelic pouches so from that enteron pouches would be developing and here the example is the remaining three phyla that is after mollusca echinodermata hemichordata and chordata and once again these three phyla together you can put them as deuterostomic so these are deuterostomic okay so this will do about the concept of coelom uh for mcq this is more than sufficient let me see for some question by the time okay so mesoderm also protects the gut of the organism certainly why not and uh, uh, yes these layers germ layers if we want to know about them we will have to study the embryology without studying the embryology without going through the embryonic stages we won't be able to find out which part has originated from where that is absolutely correct the concept that you have got okay so uh, i think we are through with coelom and from here we will be able to move on to our next concept of in the basis of classification and that would be segmentation uh shubham uh arthropods are hemocoelomate uh, actually it is hemocoel the term is used hemo word comes for blood so in the arthropods there is open blood vascular system so their coelomic space is filled with blood so that is why we use the term hemocoelomate but of course embryonically it is very much schizocoelom right so schizocoelom has further modified to become hemocoel or hemocoelom in case of arthropods so i think that uh, clears your doubt okay so uh, i am clearing the board i hope everybody by this time has taken down okay so we'll take up the next point in the basis of classification so here next one i think it is sixth whatever the numbering you can catch on and this is segmentation now ncrt la right segmentation it's okay but actually the segmentation that they are talking about is true segmentation which is metamerism metamerism now i'll start with the example rather metamerism or the true segmentation is found only in three phyla and this is the most important question and it has appeared in the neat exam also so this one occurs only in three phyla and those are annelida arthropoda and chordata only three okay so one thing we are clear with what about hemocoel i have just now mentioned already pankhuri shubham also had the same question hemocoel as i told you it is coelom which is filled with blood and that would be in case of animals which are having open circulatory system okay so here we have these three now here the body is divided into segments which are also called metameres okay so body is divided into and i'll add something here corresponding because as the external segmentation is there the same internal segmentation is also there so external segments are corresponding with the internal segments okay so body is divided into corresponding external and internal segments which are called 
metamers each segment is called metamers metamer okay and then one more thing like if you see uh, analida i have given given you the example as already so you have seen earthworm now one earthworm adult earthworm would be having around 100 up to 120 segments in its body so these segments are formed in the embryonic life itself so as the earthworm is growing from a young earthworm when it hatches from its egg till growing to the adult the number of segments are not going to change the number of segments are going to remain the same right because they are embryonic in origin so another important thing is that true segments are of embryonic origin true segments are of embryonic origin another important aspect and last but not the least we can mention here that with this segmentation there is serial repetition of some organs not all but some organs okay so there is serial repetition of few organs okay so that is about the segmentation and as i told you the most important question in this that you will have is these examples the phyla where true segmentation exists then another aspect is the you come across a term that is pseudo metamerism so pseudo word once again that means false so false segmentation you will find in case of tapeworm so we can take that here itself so that you have a comparative account so pseudo metamerism this one in tapeworm it occurs so this pseudo metamerism this is first of all not embryonic in origin so new segments which are here called proglottids they are continuously added okay so new segments or proglottids are added are added throughout life okay and this is certainly not embryonic yes uh, i'll take a few doubts here so kumar enterocelomic pouches as i just now told you i think you were not there in yesterday's class so you see we had seen that in the gastrulation the inner uh, there is a in, uh, invagination like this so this which is being formed this is the primitive gut the archenteron right this is the archenteron which is being formed now from this archenteron there are pouches arising from here pouches arise and these pouches will then pinch off they will separate and this will then form the coelom okay so this would be the mesoderm the this and uh, archenteron will again become complete and these pouches they have separated out and they are forming mesoderm lined spaces and this space of course is the coelom here so this is the way how it develops but of course uh, for mcq based exam you are not required to go into these kind of details i think just the statement would be sufficient for you to crack the question okay so i think uh, by keeping to that we can remain more focused because there is no end to the uh, actual science or what goes behind it okay so uh, anyway we can uh, after segmentation the last basis of classification that i am going to take up is the notochord notochord now this notochord you will see that notochord is a flexible rod which arises from mesoderm uh ashmeet you have uh, that porifera cilantrata tinophora and platyhelminthes as acylomates um if we uh, go by ncrt the new edition we can they have mentioned 
porifera cilantrata and tinophora as a silometa they have made a uh, you can say a taxon there which is a silometa for them and of course with uh, platyhelminthes they have mentioned a silomates okay and uh, there is any exception to metamerism there are of course uh, exceptions are always there but i think we'll come to that later but uh, if you want if we can in one of the mollusk which is a connecting link between annelida and mollusca neopylina that does show segmentation so that is an exceptional case but otherwise these three phyla have and amal just now i told you segmentation of tapeworm and earthworm i have given you the difference that in annelida that is earthworm earthworm there are true these are true segments which arise in the embryonic life itself so new segments are not being added throughout life the number of segments will remain constant throughout the life of the animal while in case of tapeworm continuously new segments are being added and at the uh, posterior end the segments keep on detaching and getting removed from the body so that is false segmentation so notochord this is flexible rod mesodermal mesodermal in origin okay flexible rod which is mesodermal in origin located mid dorsally on mid dorsal side of the body okay and this notochord on the basis of it the entire animal kingdom animalia we can divide it into two that if notochord is present the animals are classified as chordata and if the notochord is absent then they are non chordates okay so accordingly we can put it here notochord if it is absent in the lifetime of the animal then such animals are non chordates such animals are non chordates where you have porifera to hemichordata porifera to hemichordata these are non chordates and notochord present and it is not necessarily that it is present in the adult it can be present within uh, means in the embryonic life as in our case you know that it is present in the embryonic life and then it gets replaced by vertebral column right so if even if it is present in any stage of life then to the uh, that animal will be classified as chordata okay so present at any stage of life then such animals are going to be called chordates okay so these were the various basis of classification then there was one tiny aspect uh, in this basis uh, which is there in your uh, textbook you will see that is when we were talking about organ system so one of the organ system was mentioned that was circulatory system right so uh, circulatory system uh, we can mention here itself because that will then help us when we take up the uh, various phyla separately so uh, let me mention one of the organ system that is circulatory system now you see circulatory system first time arises in the phylum annelida so before annelida that means from porifera till ashkelminthes circulatory system absent so we can leave out that so circulatory system first time comes in annelida and from annelida it will go on up till chordata now this circulatory system once again can be either open type or it can be closed type now i will give you a very simple way to understand open type and the closed type so that you do get questions what is absent and what 
So you see in the open type there is, uh, this is a very simplified diagram, let us say this is the heart here. And from the heart, the blood is coming to the body. But here there is no capillary network you will see. Here there are open spaces which is called sinus. So the blood which is being pumped by the heart, it will be coming and filling into the sinus. And here the various organs which are present, they are directly bathed by the blood. So the blood is literally totally uh, outside that organ. And from here the blood would be returning to the heart. On the heart there would be small uh, openings which are called ostea. So the blood would be returning through this ostea. Okay? Because this concept will help you to understand even when we take up in case of cockroach. Because morphology of cockroach also we have to do. Uh, uh, this uh, Yes, in the book it is mentioned non-chordates are porifera to echinodermata. Let it be, they have forgotten hemichordata because it's a very small phylum. So, uh, and it's a minor phylum, so they keep forgetting. And let me tell you, in your book, like in the NCRT, we are studying just 10 or 11 phyla. So, don't think that animalia is constricted or small, just such a small group having only 10 or 11 phyla. Actually, um, animalia is having 35 phyla. And many of them are the minor ones, in which the number of species are maybe 50 or lesser. So those all are not in your syllabus, they are beyond the scope of 12th syllabus, right? I mean 11-12th uh, syllabus. So we are studying just a small group and hemichordata is also one of the minor ones, people keep forgetting it. So let it be, uh, if it is not given, it is this, okay? So uh, this is open type. Now in open type, the basic thing that is absent is the blood vessels are there, you see. Blood vessels are there, but the which one of the blood vessel which is absent is capillaries. Capillaries are totally absent. Okay. And if you see closed type, so again, a very simplified diagram. So in this closed type, from the heart, the blood which comes, it passes into much narrower blood vessels which are of course the capillaries. So you see the difference? Here blood will never be in the open space. The wall of the capillary will always be separating the blood from the organs. So organs are not directly bathing in the blood. Okay, so here and from one end blood would be coming and from other end it is returning to the heart. So that makes a complete circuit. So here the cap, because this is a very common question you, which you get that in which of the animals a capillary network is found or which is not found. So wherever there is open system capillary network is absent and uh, yes, I'll just come to that question. Okay, so here capillary is very much present. Okay, capillaries present. Okay, now the examples, open type, the examples we can have arthropoda, mollusca, but in mollusca also there is one particular molluscan group in which octopus is classified, that one has a closed type, so that we will mention there, mollusca. Echinoderms have a very reduced type of uh, circulatory system, but whatever is there that is considered in the open type. Echinodermata and also these hemichordata. Okay. Close type we will find in case of annelids, annelida, cephalopod mollusk. So cephalopoda is one of the class in mollusca where octopus is classified. I was just not telling you squids, octopus, cuttlefish, they are cephalopods. So cephalopod mollus and chordates, but in chordates also there is one exception except tunicates except tunicates. Now you see tunicata is one of the subphylum 
in chordata in which you have studied about acedia or herdmania that particular group they are having open type otherwise rest all the other chordates are having closed type even in annelida you see there is an exception leeches leeches have open type so even that exception we can write here itself annelida except leeches so i told you earlier also biology is a science of exceptions so everywhere we keep finding these exceptions okay so let me anvesha uh, do all chordates including mammals show internal segmentation yes certainly in mammals the segmentation is internal segmentation is distinct but the external segmentation has become indistinct we are not able to see the external segmentation and the best example mammals why not mammals we can talk about humans as well segmental muscles the segmental muscles that we have on our uh, torso we usually don't use them so we are not able to see but any person who is trying out at the gym and developing their six pack eight pack muscles so you can very much see the arrangement of the muscles which are segmentally arranged okay so that would be there then in the fish and all you can very clearly see the uh, over the under the skin we will see very clearly the segmentally arranged muscles because this originated so that they can have undulating motion while moving in the water and uh, shubham you have to update yourself hemichordates don't have notochord which was earlier thought as a notochord was not a notochord at all and that's why it has been excluded it has been removed from the group of chordates it is totally a non chordate okay so uh, this information even our books have to update Uh, although this was way back in 1959 when hemichordates were removed from the chordata group but uh, i have seen in our 9th ncrt it is still mentioned with chordates but in the 11th ncrt certainly it is mentioned with uh, non chordates okay so uh, now i'll clear the board we are through with the basis of classification now we'll start with the phylum studies and first phylum of course starting with porifera okay now you see with the phylum studies you have needn't go into lot of details because uh the type of questions that appear in neat those are on general characters and examples also just which are there in the ncrt okay um one more question before i start this are all deuterostomic animals having enterocoelom absolutely correct vinayak you can note it down that all deuterostomic animals are enterocoelomates without exception okay then uh, anvesha i think i answered this question that mammals show internal segmentation i gave you an example because our uh, number of muscles in the body they are arranged in the torso don't talk about appendages the legs and le the legs and hands don't talk about that the torso in that region you will see the muscles are segmentally arranged that is very much coming from our uh, aquatic ancestry where the muscles were arranged segment wise so that we can have undulating motion okay so uh, anyway coming on to the next thing that is phylum phylum porifera or the sponges now these are pore bearing animals they are usual many times you get question just on their habitat imagine such a easy question you get okay so they are mostly marine 
but few freshwater species and here itself we can give the example of this freshwater species which is once again a very important question that is spongula so here itself thing complete okay so nothing else you need to know then coming to uh, next thing we have already mentioned so i'm not going to write it again in the last uh, last class we have already mentioned that they don't mostly they are without any symmetry they don't have any tissues they don't have any germ layers and they have cellular level of organization cell aggregate body plan right so that all we have already mentioned so we'll directly move on to their body wall now their body wall if you will see it has outer pinacoderm the outer layer is called pinacoderm now this we are not using epidermis here or ectoderm nothing like that because just remember they don't have tissues so no tissues we cannot use the term ectoderm here pinacoderm then in the middle there is mesohyal layer mesohyal layer and inner is coanoderm okay inner is coanoderm now this pinacoderm this has just very simple flattened cells like this arranged one after the other and in between there would be some cells which are having a through and through pore so that water can easily enter so one this flattened cell is called pinacocyte and this one is called porocyte so two types of cells you will find in the pinacoderm so basically you needn't remember the name of the cells the only thing that you need to remember is that their body has number of pores and that's why they get the name for the porifera or the sponges and in the mesohyal now this one has two important things one is their skeletal structures skeletal structures and these skeletal structures are two of them that is one is the spicules the spicules these are fine needle like structures which give maintain the shape of the body you see because after all when in the ocean water or in the river water they are there so the flow of the water current can tear up the body right so there has to be something to hold them together and here the spicules are there these spicules can be either of calcium carbonate so they are calcareous or they can be of silica so they can be siliceous so spicules which are as i told you fine needle like sharp structures and the other thing that they have is spongin fibers now spongin fibers are proteinaceous protein fibers basically and they are providing the shape here okay so uh, in the mesohyal this this is the skeletal structure is present then apart from that in this mesohyal there are uh, one particular type of cell which are wandering within the mesohyal and that is i'll have to write it here doesn't matter i'll write it here so amebocytes amebocytes these are wandering cells in mesohyal and the name amebocyte is given because of this only because just like amoeba by pseudopodial motion they would be moving within uh the mesohyal and they carry out number of functions and coming to coanoderm in the coanoderm the cells which are present these are called coanocytes coanocytes or collar cells coanocytes or the collar cells now this one is the most important because this is the question that has appeared also in the exam because this this is the most characteristic cell of a sponge this is you will find it only in sponges nowhere else right so this cell if you will see this one has a cell body here and there is a collar like structure coming out okay so just like a funnel it is making it is basically number of microvilli which are making this and from in from the center there is a flagellum coming out so it's a flagellar cell as you see with a collar on it and this is lining the entire 
uh, cavity there i will we'll just be coming to that so most characteristic most important cell of the sponges that is coanocytes okay and uh, amebocytes a little more about them one of the particular ones we can mention archaeocytes 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 these are totipotent cells totipotent undifferentiated cells these are present in the mesohyle they are type of amebocyte only you see so archaeocytes you see uh, totipotent when we use the uh, word it comes from total potential right there the cells have the ability to divide and form the entire organism the entire organism can be formed by this so that is why these sponges have very high regenerative capacity we can take the sponge body cut it into number of small pieces and then again put it inside the water the medium where they live so it will regenerate the because archaeocytes will be present in that uh, fragment that we have cut off and it will regenerate to give rise to entire sponge body okay so uh, now a little about uh, the arrangement of this cell or their body if you see so uh, what you find is that let us say they are they are it is attached here and it is a flower vase shaped body a very simple one i am drawing here and so if we are taking a section so outer layer and the inner layer in between as we said there is going to be mesohyle so this is how in section their body would be appearing okay so this openings here these openings are called ostia ostia are the inhalant pores through which water would be entering inhalant pores which are many numerous inhalant pores are there then this opening here this is called osculum osculum this one is the exhalant pore exhalant pore which would be only one okay and here the cavity here this cavity this cavity is called paragastric cavity or simply it can also be called spongo seal because the seal is cavity the cavity inside the sponge body that would be spongo seal or paragastric cavity and it is this paragastric cavity where the inner lining of course as you see it is the one which is lined by i'm just drawing a uh, flagellar structure so you can understand that here the coanocytes are present so coanocytes are present on the inner lining now the water current water which is outside will be flowing through these ostia coming into the paragastric cavity and this flagella will be continuously beating and pushing the water outward so this continuous flow of water through the sponge body this is what is called water canal system okay so water canal system the details of the canal system is of course not in the syllabus that is the three types ascon sicon and leucon type but the basic idea that you have to understand is what is canal system so canal system is continuous flow of water through the body of the sponge right and as a result and here the aspect of coanocytes becomes very important this is very important because it is because of these coanocytes the beating of the flagella is able to move the water through the body of the organism uh, yes vidhan uh, pinacoderm is just the outer layer it is outer layer of the body wall that is called pinacoderm that means here this lining that you see here this would be pinacoderm okay and this pinacoderm it we if we see it at microscopic level through the microscope so you will find it has flattened cells just like we have epithelium on the outside they are having pinacocytes but this is not tissue the cells are separate each cell can uh, doesn't have a underlying basement membrane okay and in between the pinacocytes there would be inter it will be interspersed with porocytes 
which are having pores inside them and it is through these pores that water will be entering so that means the at the place of the ostia you will see that these porocytes would be present uh mesohyal layer yes initially we used to do so many different types of modifications of the amebocytes but seeing the present level of questions for the last 4 5 years uh this is not required okay so you can just know that there are wandering cells inside the mesohyal which are called amebocytes and one special cell i have mentioned which is totipotent that is archaeocytes so this much will suffice we needn't uh, go through uh, trophocytes thesocytes germ cells so on this is not required because it has never appeared in the uh, neat exam and uh, now you are not going to have any state exams as such so there is no point in unnecessarily taxing your brain okay so uh, next thing that is uh, one line in crt has written let me add on that because you can get that as a statement that they have mentioned that these quonocytes they line the paragastric cavity a body cavity that's how they have written and also the canals one more thing they have mentioned so canals are basically this one i have drawn a very simple sponge uh, where canals are not there but you will find that in the larger sponges this body wall undergoes folding that is the name of the cavity paragastric cavity is the name of the cavity uh, aman okay so this cavity inside the body of the sponge and i told you the sponge you can remember फ्लावर वेस्ट जैसे शेप का है ना या जग घर का जग समझ लें तो उस जग का जो बॉडी वॉल है वो बॉडी वॉल दैट लेयर आउटसाइड दैट इज द आउटर लेयर वुड बी पेनाकोडर्म एंड इनर साइड विच इज टूवर्ड्स द वॉटर दैट वुड बी दी क्वानोडर्म राइट और इन साइड द स्पेस विच इज देयर प्रेजेंट इन साइड दैट वेसल दैट स्पेस इज द पैरागैस्ट्रिक कैविटी ओके सो कमिंग टू दिस वन uh so this quonocyte as our ncrt has mentioned that this one lines the body cavity that is this body cavity paragastric cavity or spongocele that they have body cavity and canals okay so this just line they have mentioned types of canals you are not required to do but what is canal let me just give you a brief idea that in case of some of these sponges where complex canal systems have evolved so you will find that this body wall undergoes lot of foldings like this and you see suppose this layer has undergone folding so because of folds you will see this space created here this space created so on these spaces are called the canals so in that some of the canals we are going to be lined by the quonocytes that is just because whenever there is a folding you can very well understand the surface area is going to increase so that means the area lined by quonocytes is increasing so that will better help in the flow of water okay so uh, coming to next thing what is the purpose of this canal system because that is very important because you see uh, these sponges are sessile organisms okay these are sessile organisms and as a result they require a continuous flow of water okay so water canal system so this one is continuous flow of water through the body where you can see the water enters through the ostia from the ostia it comes into the body cavity which i told you can also be called spongocele and it would be going out through the oscula now the other important thing is what is the purpose of it so you will see that through the water water which is entering into the body through that fine microscopic organisms like uh, protozoans bacteria they would be also coming along with water and when they come here into this spongocele these quonocytes which are here they will capture that food and that way uh, that they will be feeding on it and you can very well understand this ostia they are microscopic structures so only very fine such organism means such uh, microscopic organisms can only enter through that ostia you uh, larger organism of course won't be able to enter where is collar cell present all along the inner lining all along the inner lining of the spongocele okay so uh, here 
this is this one helps in helps in gathering food canal system this is the function helps in gathering food okay the uh, next thing that is through this water there is flow of the respiratory gases oxygen dissolved in the water will also be coming in and carbon dioxide will be released in that water so that it goes out okay so there is respiration it helps in respiration then nitrogenous waste of the animal will also be released in that water so excretion and last but not the least of course in this water only they will be discharging their gametes so one sponge will be releasing the sperms which will go out of the osculum and through the water it will be reaching into another sponge where fertilization will occur okay so this also helps in reproduction reproduction where as i told you it is dispersal of gametes okay so these are the four main functions and this is a very important question because out of that one of the option will be changed for you that which of the following is not a function of the water canal system and like where they can put one that is uh locomotion so that would be absolutely wrong because none of the sponge can move they are all of them sessile attached to the substratum they are attached to some rock or something and they are never able to move so they are not motile okay so that would be absolutely incorrect so accordingly you can find out the answer so this is there then uh, as we said it helps in gathering food so fine particulate matter they are taking up so for that they can be called filter feeders so sponges are filter feeders so i'll rub this side now okay so next thing we can mention sponges are filter feeders because they are filtering plankton small microscopic organisms from the water and feeding on them then digestion is occurring inside the cell that is the coonocyte which has taken up that us there itself the digestion will occur so just like you study in protozoans inside a food vacuole like that okay so digestion is intracellular so when it is inside the cell then it is called intracellular digestion okay i hope everybody knows that in higher organisms in our case you see it is occurring in the lumen of our alimentary canal whether it is the inner space of the stomach or inner space of the intestine there the digestion is occurring outside the cell so that is extracellular digestion here it is intracellular digestion okay then respiration excretion is by simple diffusion excretion by simple diffusion then next thing we can mention is about nervous so this is the only phylum in the animal kingdom where a nerve cell is not present it is absent okay so nerve cells totally absent okay so that doesn't mean they don't feel here each and every cell of the body has the ability to sense their surrounding so there is a specialized nerve cell is not present okay then next thing that is coming to reproduction so there is asexual as well as sexual reproduction asexual reproduction in which there is one that is gemules gemules which are also called internal buds what are pinacocytes pinacocytes are just the cells the name of that cell which is on the outer layer of their body okay that is pinacocyte i think these are okay gemules these are internal buds 
internal buds and these are uh, these develop in freshwater sponges and few marine sponges okay and these gemmules they will then these are tiny structures in which number of archaeocytes are present and these gemmules will then grow into complete organism okay then the other one that is coming to sexual reproduction sexual reproduction now sexual reproduction in this case first of all we need to mention that sponges are hermaphrodite hermaphrodite that means the sexes are united the same sponge will be producing both the sperms as well as the ova okay so they are hermaphrodite but there is going to be cross fertilization so one sponge would be releasing these sperms and this is something very common thing that you know that in most of the cases maximum cases it is the male gamete the sperm which is motile the female gamete is immotile it is larger and immotile so the female gamete the ova will remain in the mesohyle layer while the sperms will be discharged in the water and these uh, sperms will be uh, moving through the water and they'll reach another sponge where the fertilization will occur now this fertilization since it is occurring within the mesohyle layer so it will be internal fertilization so internal fertilization occurs in mesohyle layer itself then there is indirect development the term indirect is used when there is a larval stage indirect development with and here there is a larval stage larval stage develops and you see this larva here larva is very much motile so i told you in the beginning itself in the first class that uh, in animals locomotion is one of their char characteristic property even if they are able to move at some stage of life later they might be uh, sessile they are attached to some substratum so same way in case of sponges you see they are sessile but their larval stage is very much motile okay so larval stage develops and there is motile larva motile larva and in this entire phylum there can be uh, two types of larva they are so named one is amphiblastula and the other is parenchymula amphiblastula and parenchymula both the larva are motile the basic difference you needn't go into but uh, these are two different types of different species form different larva basically it is that then <coughs> coming to the examples leucosolenia leucosolenia this is one of the sponge then we can mention spongilla we have already done this is a fresh water sponge spongilla u spongia u spongia this one is bath sponge because here the dried skeleton of the animal is used as a bath sponge and not the ones which we use at home those are artificial ones so this one uh, and why this one only is used not other so that's a very interesting thing because here the skeleton is without spicules so the skeleton is having only spongin fibers the spicules are absent okay so here spicules are absent okay in this u spongia and then there is another one that is uh u plectella this is venus flower basket
So these are few of the examples, and just uh, NCRT has given just three examples as such. So that many will do. Okay. So uh, yeah, there is one uh, doubt. What is mesohyal layer? Now mesohyal layer is the layer which is present between the outer and the inner wall of the sponges, and this layer is different from the diploblastic animals where we had talked of in diploblastic animals we had seen that it was mesoglia here we have a different term mesohyle because first of all there are no germ layers and in this layer there are skeletal structures which i told you about that spicules and spongin fibers and the other one is that there are um, some cells also in it which are called amebocytes as they have the ability to move by pseudopodia all through the mesohyle layer okay so that is about the mesohyle and this mesohyle layer is thus able to communicate because you see the food has come into the spongocele there it has been trapped by the conocytes and the end products of that digestion they have to reach to other cells also so who will be carrying all that to the other cells that would be done by amebocyte through the mesohyle layer okay so i think that will satisfy your query any other question any other thing that you want to talk of okay so let me raise a few questions then uh, because uh, last 5 minutes i am not wanting to start with a new phylum that we'll do tomorrow so here rather i will uh, i can raise some questions to you what you have learned let me see okay so first of all uh, you are going to tell me that if i talk about earthworm cockroach frog so what is common to all of them so one thing let me mention uh, schizocelom then another one that is metamerism third thing that is diploblastic and fourth let us mention um, open circulatory system so just a quick question i made here okay so we i have given you three example three animals earthworm frog and cockroach so what is common in between these three animals uh yes classes of porifera classes are not in the syllabus of neep so that's why i have not done okay so you are not required to do the classes so you can skip that so that way your animal kingdom slightly becomes easier to manage you see i said one was open circulatory system so open circulatory system will be in cockroach being an arthropod but earthworm and frog they have closed circulation so that is that won't be there deuterostomic condition of course that would be true because uh, sorry that will also be false right uh, because deuterostomic condition is in chordata uh, frog is a chordate while annelida and cockroach Uh, that is earthworm and cockroach they are very much protostomic okay Pro uh, yes metamerism okay now the answer is coming good yes so all three that is out of the options which i gave you i forgot the options also that is metamerism absolutely correct because annelida arthropoda and mollusca we have mentioned and uh, diploblastic not at all diploblastic is not true for any three of them because all three of them are triploblastic isn't it so it was a non option actually okay so i think uh, that will do for the day and uh, although we are still left with 5 minutes but i think we can wind up because there's no point in starting a new file okay so if you have any doubts you can put up your doubts and then we can wind up the class close circulation also is wrong because cockroach has a open circulation earthworm and frog do have closed okay so that also is wrong coelomate i don't think i gave the option coelomate i gave i think schizocelom and schizocelom would be in annelida and arthropoda but not in chordata okay so uh, okay that would do for the day right so we can wind up the class then uh, thank you for being here and going through the entire thing and i hope 
you will whatever we have done today you will go through it once and uh, tomorrow when we take up the class uh, that would be from nidaria will be starting so once again the basis of the classification all that i have already given you i will not write those things again you have to remember that wo wo those point that they are diploblastic some are they have a tissue grade of organization so so on so that can be added to that itself on your own okay so i'll just take the important points so that will do uh, bye for now